Okay, so now we're going to start talking about variance. Um, variance is also called the second central moment. So it's an average, because that's what the word moment means. Um, it's a second average, meaning that we're going to have some square term. So it's an average involving some squares. Um, and the word central just means that you're taking the average around the mean, okay? So all variance tells you is how spread out is your data. So what, how do the values, how do the, individ, how do the individual values of x vary across the mean? So that's what variance means. It basically refers to the spread of data around the average. We represent um, variance by the standard deviation squared. So the first moment of um, central, the first central moment is just the standard deviation. And we'll see here th that the second central moment is a little bit more important for us, um, and it's just the variance around the mean. Okay. So if you have if you have a distribution, we're talking about discrete data, but it also applies for continuous data like this. So if you have a continuous data set like this, um, if your spread, if the spread of your individual values of x are really large around the mean, then you say that the variance is large. But if the spread, like in this case, becomes smaller, meaning the values are closer to the mean, then you say that the variance is small. Um, in some cases, the variance is very small, like this purple graph, right? Um, here, the variance is almost zero. So some cases, variance can be very, very small. If all of your values were here at the mean, right, all of your values were at the mean, then you would say that the variance is zero. That means you have no variance. So variance simply refers to the amount of spread your data has. If sigma squared is very, very large, then that means your, your data is spread out a lot. Um, and if variance is very, very small, that means your data is clumped together, okay? Okay, moving on. Um, mathematically, how do you define variance? Well, mathematically, variance is the distance from the mean squared, right? So that's what the word central means. The squared comes from the fact that it's the second moment um, and so forth. So the variance is basically how do you find variance? Well, you take your data point, your individual data point, then you subtract it from the mean. Whatever number you get, you square it, and then you add up all of those terms. Um, here's what I mean. So you take your data point x, for example, x3. You subtract it from the mean. So this here is the mean. Um, so this is the mean. Remember, these brackets refer to an average. And then you square the quantity. So, and the important thing to note here is whenever you square a number, you always get a positive number. Okay, so whenever you square a number, you always get zero or a positive number. Okay, so, you, so the variance will never be a negative number. So if I want to make it more fancy, the variance is basically each of the data points, x1, x2, x3, and so forth, you subtract them from the mean, then whatever number you get, you square it, and you multiply it by the probability associated with each number xj. Then you add up all of these values, and you'll get your variance. So this is how I represent the variance. Um, like I said, I won't repeat it now, but this is the formula to calculate the variance. Most of the times, um, you won't have to calculate the variance, but you'll need to understand what it means, okay? So qualitatively, if variance, if sigma squared is a big number, that means your data is very much spread out. Um, if I were to take the height of, um, you know, 500 students, then that would be a spread out data sample. Um, if I decided to take the height of students from grade 1 to grade 12, 
all the kids in a class, then I would expect that the variance is going to be very large because the grade ones, they might be at a height of four feet and the grade 12 students might be at a height of six feet. So your data goes from four to six. So that's pretty large variance going on over there. Um, but if I just calculated the height of all grade 12 boys, then chances are is that the variance might not be too big. It, the data is very close together, right? So now, here's, here, let's, let's kind of solve this formula a little bit more. Let's simplify it, okay? So I want to simplify this term. I'm going to create, I'm going to treat xj as a, and I'm going to treat um, the average of x as b. Then I have a negative sign in between, and then they're both being squared. So this reminds me of this identity, this mathematical identity, a minus b whole squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use that. So I bring out the px of j, I factor it out because every term is going to have px of j. So a squared is just xj squared, b squared is the mean squared, then I have minus 2 a times b. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to break up. I'm going to distribute this sigma sign inwards and I'm going to distribute the probability inwards. When I do that I'm left with xj squared p x of j plus this term over here um, and then subtract this term over here. Now if you remember and if you've been paying attention, you will recall that xj squared multiplied by pxj is just the second moment of distribution. So the first moment of distribution is just the average value of x. The second moment of distribution is the squared of x, right? Um, remember, the nth moment of distribution was basically if you had an exponent over here. So the exponent tells you what's the moment of distribution. So that simply is just x squared average. Now, the mean is just some average number, right? The mean is some constant. It's an average. It could be, if I'm talking about the height of 10 kids, the average might be 5 feet tall. That, that's an average, right? So the average is a constant. Um, so what I can do is I can bring the average sign or I can bring the average number outside of the sigma. So that's what I do in my next step. I bring out the averages outside of the sigma sign. Okay, if I do that, well the first term is just the second moment of distribution. Then this px of j, if I add up all of the individual probabilities, I'm going to get 100% or 1. So, so this is an important point to note, that the sum of all individual probabilities associated with some events is equal to 1 or 100%. For example, what's the probability that if I roll a dice, I'll get um, heads or tails. Well, basically, or means to add up. So the probability of getting heads or tails is 100%. If you roll a, if you do, if you toss a coin, you are gonna get either heads or tails. You're not gonna magically get bananas or oranges or something absurd like that. So the probability associated with each logical event, the collection of each logical events, is is 100% or one. So this turns out to be just one. Now. Remember, xj multiplied by px of j is just the first moment of distribution, simply the average of x. Remember, this was the second moment of distribution because xj was being squared. But if xj, nothing is happening to it, then it's the first moment of distribution. So then I have x squared, the average of it, plus I just have this, um, then I have the mean of x squared, then multiply that by minus 2 mean of x multiplied by mean of x, and that turns out to be 2 multiplied by the mean of x squared. Now these two terms are like terms. They're both like horses. This guy's like a donkey. Okay, so you can add horses and horses, but you can't add a horse and a donkey, right? So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to add the horses, um, and I'm going to get a negative horse left. I mean, in real life that doesn't happen, but I hope you understand the analogy. So the sigma squared, or the, or the 
variance is equal to, um, it's equal to the second moment of distribution subtracted um, by the mean squared. Now, a lot of the times people think that these two terms are the same, but that's not the case, okay? We'll see that why in a second. So the formula for variance, um, it also it simplifies into this form, okay? So the point is, is that the spread of data is either zero or a positive number, right? You can either have no spread or some spread. If, it, if the value of uh, variance is zero, then that means you have no spread. All of your values are clumped together at the mean. If you have a positive number for um, sigma, that means that there's some spread in the data, okay? Um, the point is that variance cannot be a negative number. It doesn't mean anything to say that you know, my data has a negative spread in it. That, that just doesn't make any sense. So the important point is, is that sigma squared is always greater than or equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, no spread. If it's more than zero, there's some spread. So if sigma squared is greater than or equal to zero, that must also mean that these two terms are either equal or greater than zero. So the point is they're not always equal, right? They might they might look equal. You might think, oh, it's just the same way of representing something, but that's not, that's not true. So when these two terms, um, so anyways, the point is, is that, the, is that the second moment of distribution is always greater than or equal to the mean squared. So they're not the same. In fact, the second moment of distribution, which is this guy, it's always greater than or it's equal to the mean squared. So that, that raises some important things. So the point is, when these two terms are the same, that means sigma squared is equal to zero, that means all of your data is just at the mean, okay? When this guy, when the second moment of distribution is more than the mean squared, then that means that sigma is more than zero, um, and it simply means that you have a spread around your data, okay? So that's what I wrote down over here. You can read through it if you want, um, and then I graphically represented it to, to show that, well, if your second moment of distribution is more, this sign, it, it just means that, you know, this number is greater than this number, which is the mean squared. If it's more than the mean squared, then you will have some spread. That means that sigma squared is also greater than zero. But um, if x squared, or the second moment of distribution, is equal to the mean squared, which, which I think most of you were thinking that these two are the same things, that's a special case. If that does happen, then that means all of the data is clumped together at the center. All of the data is just here at the mean, okay? That's what it means. So I hope um, the distribution, variance, all of this makes sense to you right now.